Welcome, I'm Terry Meyer, and today we're going to be painting plain air in Ohio. It's uh, late April, and a couple days ago we had snow, but luckily it has melted. And behind me you're going to see a landscape. It's actually the back of my house. And I have been looking out the window for a long time, thinking, you know what, this would be a great painting. It's simple, uh, a great demonstration on just how to paint a simplistic landscape and um, you don't have to get complicated there's no building or structures that's going to be in this but you can actually paint something very beautiful from something very simplistic in nature so i'm going to set up uh, in my kitchen looking out the window and we're going to paint this together so join me in a few minutes at my easel back in my kitchen and i have my easel set up in front of the window and so first thing that I'm going to do is establish my horizon line here and again I, I mentioned that my canvas is 12 inches wide and actually it's about four and three, four and three quarters high this is my kind of my signature thing that I do is these panoramic landscapes and I will put a picture up of what I am actually drawing from my window so you can see this is the tree line and I just start off with a gentle simplistic road map And so, let's see, the sky is cloudy with a little blue in it. Okay, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do for now. And the rest will be coming alive as I put in the colors. So I started this simplistic scene a drawing of this simplistic scene. There's a couple different tree lines here. There's This is further back, this is more forward. So I'm just establishing that. And the nice thing about uh, doing drawings and paintings of just landscape with no buildings is you can move things around and um, do whatever competition composition you really like because it really doesn't matter because no one's going to know the difference but if you have a building that's a that's a different story you got to know how to draw um, the angles and all of that correctly so i'm hoping to do this in about a half hour it's not a very complicated scene it's very straightforward and if you've watched any of my videos previously you know that i like to start with the sky and sometimes I do an underpainting, sometimes I don't. I've just started doing that as um, just kind of experimenting to see if I like the underpainting. Um, so I think I'm going to start with some, some purple. And I'm going to use some kind of wild, a little bit of wild colors here. So I'm going to start with this. And the reason that I'm choosing this is purple recedes. Uh, it kind of creates a distance, the illusion of a distance. And I'm changing up the color a little bit. And I think I'm going to actually add some pink in here too. It's not what I see because it's very gray here, but I, I do see... Mm, a little bit of pink in the sky. I'm going to make it vibrant. And again, this is just an underpainting. Okay, and then I'm going to add a cerulean blue. Now I do see this color. I'm just getting kind of crazy today. I want this to be a colorful painting, and I'm just using nature as my inspiration. I 
and there's a lot of clouds, so this is going to be the backdrop of my clouds. All right, now I'm going to go with the. You can barely see that. This is a almost a charcoal. I think it's a little too dark for what I want. So let me find a different gray here. I want kind of a medium gray. Sometimes the hardest part in painting is finding that right color, or if you're oil painting, mixing that right color. Unfortunately, with pastels, if you don't have it, you're kind of at a loss and you've just got to get the value right. That's the key. If you get the value right and the color's off, it, it'll still work for you. All right, let me see this color. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use this color here. Like I said, this is an underpainting, so it's a little darker in here. And there's really not a lot of dark. Through this area, except for tree trunks that are coming up. All right, now I'm going to add kind of a, I'm going to say it's kind of a peachy color. So actually, I add that over in here, and I see that color again over in here. And I'm just creating a little bit of a road map. Okay, now a gray green. I'm gonna put that's a little light. I'm gonna go a little bit darker on that. And if you notice, I used a charcoal gray uh, pastel mat, and I just again wanted to do something a little different to see. It's still a little, that's too light. Maybe I'll go along this line. And then I see that color back in here where it's being hit by the light. And then and then I'm gonna go a little bit more purple in here. And then um, this is all in the foreground. This is the hayfield. It's very, it's really bright green, and so I don't want it to be too bright, so I'm going to put the complementary, complementary color of green is red, so I'm going to put that in the foreground here. And I'm going to go, as we get closer, I'm going to go a little brighter red. Okay, and then I'm going to get my alcohol out, and I'm going to alcohol this in. And so I've got my underpainting started. Okay, so I'm just, this will dry a little bit lighter, but it does actually change the color of the pastel makes it darker. But I'm doing this because it'll it's like I said, I'm I'm just doing a road map here. And I'm experimenting and you're watching the experimentation with me. Actually, I was in the attorney's office a couple days ago and I saw 
it was a contemporary landscape that I really liked. And it was very loose. Um, and it kind of inspired me because it kind of reminded me of my backyard scene. And the colors were really quite lovely. And I said, hmm, let me take that as my inspiration and paint this. Because a lot of times I, I have some beautiful sunsets because I'm facing west here. But in the summertime, it's just really a lot of green because you got the hayfield. You got cows on it many times, which adds interest. Um, but you're overwhelmed with the green during the summer. And so it's not real compelling to paint. So now I've got different shades of green because it's spring. And um, so I thought, well, this would be a good opportunity to see if I can capture it with more, with vibrancy. All right, so I'm gonna give this a couple minutes to dry. I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'll be back with you in about. Okay, I'm back. And so now I'm going to add some clouds. Again, I, I'm just going to start with the sky. And I'm using it as a soft lavender color. It's kind of a gray day here in Ohio. We have a lot of those, especially during the transition time from winter to spring and summer. And then, and then summer we'll have magnificent blue skies. And I'm gonna get the same color. It's gonna go a little bit lighter. And that's Not quite. It's... I'm just kind of looking at my colors here and see. I see a little bit of blue peeking out, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of that in here. And I'm kind of swirling a little bit because the clouds are um, some stratocumulus. So they're not totally flat. They've got a little bit of um, like kind of a heap to them. They have a roundness to the tops of them. The bottoms are more, more flat. So I'm just trying to capture that. And I, I like a little bit of the, um, the dark um, coming through. I don't want to cover all that up. I think that adds um, just another layer of visual interest to the painting. Okay, so I'm good with that. I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot more with the sky. I think this is pretty much it. I might add a little touch more blue in there. I'm actually making it look a little more blue than it is in the, um, the scene. But that's, that's the nice thing about being a painter. You can create whatever you want. You're the artist. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go come back with that purple, but the thing is, I think that's too, uh, this is the color I'm looking for. It's more muted, 
And that's going to push my landscape. Give it some um, perspective. There's a lot of trees here. Big tree line. And again, I don't want to cover everything up. I want to um, let some of that show through. And I'm going to add a little bit more purple, but a little bit more vibrant. Kind of blending the two. And I actually have a third color that's a little darker. I'm going to take my blending stick here and I see a little bit of that color in here. Put that in. And as you know, if you've watched any of my videos before, I, I like to use blending sticks. brings the sky down and it just gives you the impression of trees coming up. Okay, so that's going to be one level of my tree line. And this is the back tree line that I'm establishing right now. I'm just adding a little bit of um, like tree limbs and let's see here I'm going to bring a little bit of blue down in here It's a dance, you go back and forth, so. Back with colors and I'm just dragging it back into the tree line to soften that. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is some, um, there's another level of trees right through here. That's a little too dark, and so I'm going to combine that with another gray that's kind of a, a charcoal gray. I want it dark, but I don't want it that dark. And so I'm just going to scrub that in there. Lighten that up just a bit. And I see a little bit of Kind of a maroon burgundy color over here. It's amazing when you look at something long enough what you see. And I kind of want that showing through. And it's a cool color, so it's going to push that back. And now I'm going to. Actually, I kind of want a, it's a gray green, and I think that's still a little too light, so I'm looking for that. I'm 
There we go. That's the color right here. quite a bit of it in here. Okay, put that back up. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that maroon. I see it. Some of it in here too. And then I'm gonna come back. with something darker. Um, I like, there's a color called Merlot, which is a deep purple color. It's almost a black. And, um, but it's not, it's a lot softer than black. And I see, let's see, it comes across here. The separation of tree lines. I'm going to put that in there because I think that adds a nice visual interest. And I'm going to. Okay. Some big trees back in here. Right. Right. And as you can tell, I'm just it's kind of like an impression, really. Nothing is really stated, obviously, at this point. Okay. Now I'm going to add something that's a lot more um, vibrant green. I'm going to go, first of all, with this. It's too blue. Okay. So I'm going to go back with this color here, and this is really what I'm seeing, this color right, right here. Alright, so, and I'm going to still keep a lot of this green in there. I really like that, that really is starting to pop the scene and I like the red showing through and actually I see a little bit of this orange in there and then just and then you see this orange I'm gonna add a little bit of that and this is, should be the same distance on this side to this side. So I'm going to check that here in a minute to make sure that I don't have it going uphill or downhill. It's hard to tell right now. I think this side's a little higher. So just give me a second here. I'm going to look at, I'm just going to use this tool, my blending stick, to go up here and make sure that I have it correct. So there to there. But actually, this is, I want that to be green, so I'll just 
took the stick and there we go. Had a little bit of that there. Okay, now I'm not going to blend this hardly at all because I really like that a lot. And I'm going to add just a little bit more. Of, this is actually even brighter, this color here. Let's add it to the foreground. Okay, now I'm going to go There's, let's see here, there's this color green. I'm just trying to decide color-wise if this is too light or too dark. I think that I want to go, um, I think that this, I want this Okay, I'm going to be using these two colors, and so I'm going to have, go ahead and fill this in with this color green. And there's a little bit of it over here. Just a hint of it over here. And then I'm going to take that Merlot. Oops, excuse me. My um and and just put in. the impression of trees. And now I'm going to just continue scrubbing this in. And I'm trying to think about how a tree looks. And so I'm just kind of at splashing it with color. And again, I'm seeing a little bit of that maroon color in here a little bit. I'm just gonna put some hints of that in there. And blending a little bit but I want this to be kind of chunky and I don't want to blend it too much this is definitely a very contemporary landscape that I'm doing here okay now I'm going to take that color because the star of this painting is this tree line right here and so that's what I'm trying to capture is the beautiful greens that I see coming out. And you can see them in this tree line, but it's too far back here to see the colors. So I'm focusing on capturing.
and I'm varying the heights as I see it. Okay, now I'm going to take my Derwent pastel pencil and I'm going to restate some of these branches of the trees. There's a lot of them back there and I'm just doing it randomly. And I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. It's um, coming out kind of the way that I had intended it to. There is, um, let's see here, there is some green. I think that's way too light. Here at the base, a lot of I'm just going to make some hints of that. And let's see here. I'm going to add just a little bit more of this olive green. And I'm going to add some lighter olive green here in this distance tree line. And you can see a little bit of the trunks coming up here. And I'm going to soften this hard line here. Come back with some of that green here. Too. I like that. And um, I believe I'm just about done with this painting. I don't want to go into too much detail. I want this to be very impressionistic. I think it reads as real, representational, but still nice, understated. And it's got a lot of wow because of this color here. It really makes it stand out. Let me do one more thing. I'm thinking. I'm going to add just a little bit more purple back here. I like the way that looks. And I'm going to add a little deeper color just to Add a little drama to the background, a little bit more drama. And I'm going to add a little dark there. And I see a little bit more of this actually I 
like that little sparkle of color there. And I see that coming across, actually. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more. purple up in here. I really like the way that purple looks. Okay, I am done. I'm not going to do anything more to it. I want this to be very fresh. And um, I just said that, now I'm going back into it. I'm going to put a little more blue back in here. Just kind of break that up a little bit. Okay. For a few moments, <clears throat> I thought I was done, but my husband came home for lunch. And um, it gave me a chance to evaluate. And plus the lighting changed slightly. We got more sun. And so this grassy area, I see a lot more yellows and stuff in it. So I've decided to continue forward and um, put in a few more colors. So I'm going to add just a soft... layer of yellow and that even adds more life to it. That layering is really what makes a painting look more beautiful when the colors sh sh show through and I don't want to go too far up in here because I want that yellow to be in the foreground. Okay, another thing that I noticed is I have some yellow, kind of a yellow brown in the foliage of the trees. Yes, more like this color. And it pushes some of that back. And I'm going to add a little bit to that because not all of it's so brilliant. Yeah, that definitely adds a lot. Just a little touch here and there. Look at the um, how that changes the um, painting. And I'm doing it more at the bottom because the light's hitting it from the top. In fact, I'm going to go here. Try to keep track of my colors here. Oops. Much better. Okay. Again, I'm gonna. And I noticed that there was a little bit more yellow. I'm using this this green, but then I'm adding this on top of it because as the sun came out, I saw more yellows. And then using that merlot color that I like, I added. A few more tree trunks that stand out. And 
and um, I'm just looking at this again to see if there's anything else that I want to add. Yeah, I think that, you see how I pulled that down so not everything's on the same plane? And that makes that look, I like that better. You got that one a little crooked. So now it gives it more dimension of trees coming forward. Oh, that's much better. Okay, and now I'm going to add a little bit more. Kind of ground those trees, otherwise they're just kind of floating in the grass. thumbprint on the clouds here like that. and I'm going to add just a tad bit more cerulean popping through. Another thing that I, I noticed that I wanted to add is some pink because I saw pink. I'm not sure that's kind of a... Um, that's the pink I want. That's too bright, so maybe this is and get my blending stick and just kind of blend that a little bit. Put that pink just adds a little more, again, layering, and I see it in the sky at the base near the tree line. Just ever so slightly. And I am I'm done with this painting. I'm not going to do anything more to it. I really like the way it turned out. It's very impressionistic, but you, you know what it is. Um, it's full of life and color, and um, it reminds me of my backyard, and I'm very pleased with it. It'll serve as a memory, um, doing this video and spending time with you, and I hope you've enjoyed the process, and if you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.